you remember, EOS had come out, yeah. Dan Larimer's project, and they raised that phenomenal amount of money, and they were very much along the lines of build fast and fix shit later. Well, I mean, if you build shit on top of shit, then it... House of cards. It can lead to a problem. Welcome back to season five of Kryptonite's special edition London and Canary Wharf. We have some of the original gangsters of the crypto space and on top of that, a new format where you can earn crypto in every single show, plus earn swag and more. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and let's have some fun. <laughs> some of the biggest banks are money laundering for the Sinaloa cartel. And so much of what we're doing is trying to provide more transparency to the financial world. We're gonna see a surge in interest in smart contract platforms. It's gonna be an interesting market. NFTs coming from everyone. Everyone's dropping NFTs. Is there anyone now today still not sure about Bitcoin? You're fucking mad. <laughs>In a fast-moving and confusing crypto asset market, get an edge with Crypto Slate Edge. Enhanced, in-depth news coverage and extensive crypto asset and sector data are all part of your exclusive access as a member, helping you understand the market with features such as on-chain metrics and sentiments, all of which allow you to convert knowledge into action with an ad-free experience. As a bonus, access our private Telegram channel to receive live insights whilst engaging with the CryptoSlate community. Subscribe now at CryptoSlate.com forward slash edge. To your crypto community of blockchain ways across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonite Special Edition, Canary Wharf. And speaking of Canary Wharf, we're here today with a friend of mine, James Bullwater from Crypto AM, who is a legend who was basically raised in Canary Wharf. Sorry for the over. <laughs> what Great the to hell? have you here. What did you smoke? Can I have I some? I know, man. Oh, it's that, just it? yeah, relax. <laughs> But for you guys who do not know James, he's one of the legends here locally. He's a sunshine at all the crypto parties, a lovely human being. And before jumping into Canary Wharf, I would love to hear the story because it's so fascinating. But asking about you, James. Yeah. Bring us back to that moment where CityM, the most distributed financial newspaper in London, suddenly had a crypto section. <laughs> who is the man behind that? And bring us back to that okay. scene. Okay. All right. Well, was okay. All right. <laughs> It's, it, it, there is a story. And in late 2017, I'm talking to Harry and saying, well, look, you know, I'm involved in sort of this stuff called blockchain and um, cryptocurrency and, um, you know, <laughs> ICOs and, you know, this <laughs> sort of stuff. I love the accent. And, uh, can you imagine how cool it would be if we wrote about it, you know, for your, for your audience who are traditional um, yeah. financiers? And being, being serious for a minute, City AM it turned 16 this year. Oh, wow. Um, and as you rightly say, it's, it, it's, 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 it's a handout paper in, on all the commuter points. And it's, it's a very well put together um, piece of journalistic Absolutely. work. But wasn't there a little bit of friction, James? Because you, you said it was 2018 and that's where most people stopped believing, right? The well, this, whole... is, this is what's quite funny. So the decision was made, okay, we'll look at it. And I sort of thought, yeah, I'd be be a breeze, wouldn't it? Be easy, you know, sure, you know. <laughs> and of course, um, as you rightly point out, boom, wallop, the whole thing came out. So in a funny kind of way, it's a testament to City AM for sticking with it. But also, not putting too fine a point on it, I've worked bloody hard. And um, I put on a shitload of weight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> going to every party, every event, yeah, everything. I mean, I met You're you off the there. boat, yeah. you know, in your <laughs> flat. It was absolutely pouring with rain. <laughs> yeah. But you were there. But I was until there. Until the end. And I'm like, what am I doing here? This weird place. <laughs> this Swiss ball thing, like something out of Star Trek. <laughs> you know, come on, do me a favor. But, no, but was, it, was it like, a, was it Bitcoin that resonated with you first? And did you use the, the Bitcoin narrative to convince them? Or was it no, blockchain in general? No, 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 I mean, no, I mean, the, the two are separate. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, because I think that, you know, the, the concept of being able to translate a significant new financial um, ecosystem into the traditional finance world obviously had appeal. Yeah. Um, and one of the fearsomely annoying things about you know, the whole demise of 2017 was the just appalling advice 
that a lot of these young kids, you know, 24 yeah. year olds with amazing ideas, suddenly getting, you know, tens of millions of pounds. Um, and, and not one of the overpaid traditional sort of lawyer accountant advisors who were just, you know, putting a, an extra zero at the end yeah. of their bill um, ever came up with the concept of you need to probably be sensible about treasury, yeah. you know, and maybe not hold everything in, in one corners, thing and, you know, yeah. just, you know, be sensible about it. Yeah. But 2020 hindsight is brilliant, isn't it? But anyway, I mean, you know, almost as predictable as, 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 as the seasons, you know, um, the four four year cycle seems to have born, been born out again. I know to you, like there is some serious work that was done during that period of time. Like uh, now, how, how does CDM react? You know, obviously you took the risk of, you know, getting them on board. Obviously, Bitcoin, crypto, so many things have evolved since then. Are you being applauded at the... Yeah, no, look, I mean, I think, I mean, look, I mean ultimately results speak for themselves, don't yeah. they? And, 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 and um, what the pandemic did, so literally the, the, the 11th of March was when we had the event. Yeah. The yeah. 17th of March, I'd been invited. I can't say to what event because it's not fair because it went ahead. 256 people invited and 35 showed up. Oh, wow. And then the world shut down. And... Um, I must admit, living here was amazing during that period. It was yeah. just idyllic. Uh, <laughs> the weather, I don't even remember, was absolutely beautiful. It was crazy that year, right? It was right? crystal clear From skies. March, it was summer yeah. season. It was yeah, beautiful. it was astonishing. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so the pandemic itself actually has been transformational because it forced City AM completely online. Um, you know, because obviously, it, you know, with the empty city and the empty Canary Wharf, there's no one to distribute the paper to. Going online has been a massive learning yeah. curve. Um, yeah. But actually for me, selfishly, crypto AM was always, it always should have been online first with a bit of newspaper mm. activity. And um, it enabled me to free ball a bit. And, 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 and so we've you know, tried different things, we're experimenting with different things. Informative, I mean, education is the key. Um, yeah, transforming the message, you know, translating what, you know, your brother tries to do and what I try to do and other people try to do to the traditional finance markets, yeah, um, you know, is, is an important thing because obviously one of the big elements for all of us, is, you know, is institutional adoption, which I think um, has absolutely, is absolutely arrived. Yeah. What are they thinking these days, James? Because I know you have insights from traditional financiers, as we say, and and people here in London, there are many conservative, you know, rich, wealthy, you know, investors. Uh, my, what is the sentiment these well, days? I, I, I think I think that everyone knows that the 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 Bitcoin crypto. So Bitcoin is obviously the one that gets talked about the most, yeah. um, for obvious reasons. The projects that have survived, and actually, if you if you think about when we met, yeah. um, you know, Swiss Borg was was nothing, was, was nothing and yeah. and now you're a unicorn. Um, you know, and and Stanny from Ave you know, uh, had a few quid, you know, knocking around and now 21 billion, yeah, you know, and, crazy. um, you know, so the projects that, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm involved in projects for longevity as well. I'm a big fan of Cardano. I mean, you know, first, but first and foremost, you know, as well as anyone that I'm agnostic completely yeah, when absolutely. it comes, certainly with the crypto I am hat on. Um, is it Charles that you're a big fan of? Uh, well, I think really, it's the ethos of, of, of building things carefully. Now, I know that the markets don't like that because it's, you know, are we yeah, going too slow, you too slow, you too slow. Pumps, well, actually, pumps, you know, going yeah. slow and getting it right isn't a bad thing. The um, tortoise wins the hair, right? Well, there's, <laughs> but, and actually at the time, if you remember, EOS had come out, Yeah. Dan Larimer's project, and I don't think there's any love loss between those two. And, and the, the um, but th they raised that phenomenal amount of money um, and they were very much along the lines of build, you know, build fast and fix shit later. Well, I mean, if you build shit on top of shit, then it, House of cards. it can lead to a problem. And I think that, um, so I like the formal methods approach and I've taken the time to meet all of the team. Um, I mean, it's grown a lot, obviously, since I first met them, but, um, Jared Maroney, um, was, uh, the guys talk about smart contracts even back then. Um, Duncan Coots, you know, all, all of these extremely bright people that work in the IOHK and Agalos, who does Ouroboros, you know, amazing, amazing people. 
And as I said, Charles is quite a, you know, a, a, well, he's a very, very good speaker. One of the sharpest tools in the attic. We yeah, have, I right? think like so. And, and he gets a hard time, but, but you know, he doesn't like, I mean, you know, the whole social media thing. I'm just, whatever. Hi, friends. Prize question of the week. What is your favorite Steve project? Tell us in the chat and in the comments below for a chance to win a discounted Swiss Board Premium account. You know, we're here in Canary Wharf. This is a place where, you know, you... More manor, son, Yeah, isn't it? you grew up in... I live there. I live there. Exactly, we're there, right? And I, you, were, you were telling me the other day, I remember saying that, uh, I was telling you about Dubai. We're talking about Dubai and how it's trying to become the new blockchain hub. But, mm. and we still, so like Canary Wharf is growing and building so fast. Do you think London will keep this blockchain financial hub? And do you think Canary Wharf will still be one of the major places for, for crypto people around the I world? I think to that come? one of the things that's obscured Brexit is the um, pandemic. You know, none of us actually really know what the true impact of it all is. Um, but one thing is absolutely clear. Uh, and that is, at the moment, there's no joined up thinking between the FCA, the Treasury and the government. And, and actually, anecdotally, people are voting with their feet and leaving. You know, we've always advocated sensible but flexible um, uh, legislation, but also that's fit for purpose. You know, the whole adoption thing of, of um, you know, institutional adoption, because the, like, the banking side of things is also very important. And, um, you know, the the... the I suppose the final project that's of the moment that I mentioned is MELD. It's effectively decentralized banking. So um, the banking stack for Cardano. And, and, and because, because um, of the staking pool sort of ecosystem in Cardano, we've come up with something quite novel, which is called initial stake pool offering. Essentially what it means is that stake pool operators or people with ADA can delegate to our stake pools for the duration of, of the raise, right? So effectively, the, it's, it, we're earning all the rewards or a, it's either 100% of the rewards and they get meld um, and their ADA back at the end, or um, we do a 50-50 approach, you know, so that, you know, it's half and half or whatever. But I mean, we'll be lending fiat um, against crypto. Against crypto. Um, as, as well as other products That's within fantastic. that thing, but also with a long-term view on, on microfinance too. So again, you know, the discussions are being had with World Mobile to see how Meld can integrate into that sort of into that stack. But then you can be looking at microfinance so that so that the end consumer of World Mobile could be earning money from their devices, earning money from their, you know, nodes, cheap calls, access to the internet, self sovereign ID. I mean, you know, you I think Mickey where where he's got it right at World Mobile is is, is that you know, he's what well, he's identified, and where, so therefore he has got it right. Is if you've got three point six billion people unconnected, well, that's a blank canvas, isn't yeah. it, to build on? Yeah. You know, and, and do it right. You know, definitely for people coming to London in the future, they cannot come and visit London without visiting James well, Bowater. Passport, for right? Me, don't they? <laughs> can't come on Canary Wharf without permission. <laughs> for those who are coming to London, obviously the Prince. <laughs> of, of Canary Wharf, if you're what, so Canary Wharf, I would say Old Street, Shoreditch. What are some other good areas to meet crypto people like you in London if they want to well, come? Well, ironically, Mayfair. Mayfair, yeah, yeah, you're right. Mayfair, Mayfair. St James, and Green Park. Also useful. It's on the Jubilee Line. Yeah. Seventeen minutes away. Whiz whiz, you know. Perfect. Get a yeah. Novikov, Woolsey, That's Stafford so Hotel. <laughs> Have a bit you, of lunch. You heard it, guys. So if you're coming to London, you're from overseas, Mayfair, St. James, Canary Wharf, the Prince here. And then third, <laughs> you have Shoreditch and Old Street. Those are the, the hubs of crypto well, exactly. and blockchain, Yeah, right? exactly. But I mean, I think the serious point is that unless we actually do do something sensibly about the legislative framework here, then I think we're in trouble, potentially. I mean, we're already in trouble. There are people leaving, you know, there are for going to Delaware. Anecdotally, I was told that somebody was told by the FCA, probably best to withdraw your application and reapply in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, a really? lot of companies are moving to Ireland. Um, and Gibraltar as well, which is a British overseas territory and they're doing it right. So why can't we? Yeah. You know, it's, it, it is, you know, they're, and they're getting it really right. They're doing a very, very good job. I mean, the thing that worries me about Dubai um, is that they fall down the same trap as um, Malta, which is the banking situation. 
Um, because Which promises a lot, but doesn't really deliver. Yeah, but because the, the, the banks yeah. are terrified of losing, yeah. their, losing their correspondent. Exactly. Uh, and unless unless they can actually it's backfire, unless they can fix that, and I'm sure they will. You know, yeah. but it's tricky to do so. It's tricky. It's not as easy as. And don't forget that Dubai yeah. is not the real power. The real power is Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi, yeah, absolutely. Because um, they they own Dubai. Well, we we know for a fact that they already have a friend when they come here. Yeah, That's the do. most important. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, James, for coming on the show. All right, buddy. Awesome having you guys. If you liked, please don't forget to subscribe and join us every single Wednesday. Premiere at a PC near you, 8 o'clock PST. See you next week, guys. Yeah.